Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirchhoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Fantasy Football Week 13 Quarterback Rankings. So on today's episode, I'm going to be going over the quarterback matchups for Week 13 of the Fantasy Football season, talking about who has the best and worst matchups going into the week and how I think that can affect this week's outcomes and or fantasy performances as we all try to make those playoffs and or hold our positions as first round buys. After that, I'm going to be talking about my 1 through 18 quarterback rankings, in which I'll give you an idea on how I think uh, week 13 is going to play out. Uh, Dak Prescott and Drew Brees will not be included in this video because they are currently playing as I am recording this video. So that will not be included. Um, and then after that, that'll basically be it. Um, just talking quarterbacks today, and then probably tomorrow we'll go over tight end. So uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Hey, everybody, how's it going? <laughs> Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Um, feeling good. Hopefully the Cowboys can pick up a win tonight. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Currently first quarter. Try to record this video pretty quickly so I can get back to that and go ahead and see how that works out. All right. So we're going to be talking about the quarterback matchups for this coming week, week 13 of the fantasy football season. We have the fantasy points against. Now the team that gives up the most points to the quarterback position thus far this season is the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> now here's the thing. Um, the team that is playing against Cincinnati Bengals is the Denver Broncos. I'm not sure how much uh, Case Keenum is going to be able to take advantage of that, but I think there there's a pretty good opportunity for Case Keenum to actually have a good week. You know, we know for a fact that the uh, the Broncos are looking on the up and up. They've played against the Steelers and the Chargers the past two weeks and picked up W's, in fact, and they've they've looked better. The running game is established. Philip Lindsay and the offensive line they're a real deal. The defense of the Denver Broncos have been playing very great um, as of late comparatively to what they have been doing earlier on in the season where they were giving up 200-yard rushing games to Gurley and uh, Isaiah Crowell. They've turned that around. They're the second-best rushing defense in the last couple weeks in the NFL. Um, so they've they've been pretty stout against the run in the last couple weeks. So they've pretty much flipped the script. Now, comparatively, can Case Keenum take advantage of the matchup. I think he's going to be able to. The Cincinnati Bengals defense, they're beat up. They're going to be without Andy Dalton, uh, perhaps also A.J. Green. So this this could be a blowout in a sense that the Bengals are just, they're not able to convert on any sort of uh, play, not able to get longer drives, not able to get first downs. And it's just going to cause the Broncos to just completely dominate them. And I think Case Keaton could have a good week. You'll see it from my rankings. All right, number two, the Atlanta Falcons giving up the second most points to the quarterback position. Lamar Jackson, I mean, he has been great thus far. Uh, in the last two weeks, Lamar Jackson's kind of been a surprise uh, in the sense that, you know, the first week he ends up running the ball 28, or sorry, 27 times, then turns it around the second week and um, becomes more pass-focused. He throws a couple interceptions, but that's okay because at least he had a passing touchdown. As of late, you know, Lamar Jackson has become a viable option on a weekly basis, especially in leagues where... You know, you're looking for the upside in a quarterback. You, you've had, let's say, for example, the struggling um, Tom Brady, or you've had Mitchell Trubisky that has been injured, and you've ran with Lamar Jackson the last couple weeks. It's not a bad choice going into this week, playing against the poor defense like the Atlanta Falcons. I think there is a pretty big upside for him to take advantage and have a good fantasy week. He was named the starter earlier this week. And to be honest, I think Lamar Jackson is going to maintain being the Ravens starter rest of the season and probably, you know, probably next year also. They drafted him in the first round for a reason. Joe Flacco's on his way out. All right, moving on, number three, Tampa Bay Buccaneers giving up a bunch of points. Now, um, there were some concerns uh, in the comment section. I remember a specific comment that I was reading yesterday. They were saying, uh, can I trust Cam Newton this week? Um, he's usually, when they play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, at least earlier on the season, they ran the ball 100% of the time. Christian McCaffrey dominated the touches throughout that entire game, whether it was through the air or on the ground. And Cam Newton really wasn't able to produce fantasy-wise in that week. I mean, here's the deal. There is a good chance that, yes, Christian McCaffrey is going to be involved in this game and he's going to dominate the majority of the touches. That's just how this offense works. Now, is that going to impede in the fact that Cam Newton is is not going to be good? Well, I don't, I don't think that's the case. Uh, Cam Newton, the last time they played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even though uh, majority of the snaps and touches were dominated by Christian McCaffrey, Cam Newton was still a 25-point quarterback in six-point per passing touchdown leagues. I mean, thus far this season, Cam Newton's worst performance, <laughs> I mean, is week one, in which he had no passing touchdowns. 
Every other week since then, it's been two or more passing touchdowns every single week. Uh, his ability to move the ball and uh, gain some fantasy points with his legs. It's just, uh, it's amazing. So Cam Newton, he has to play against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Such a juicy matchup. Uh, it's it's going to be it's gonna be clean. So for sure, start him up. All right. Uh, number four, Dak Prescott playing against Saints. That's going on right now. Uh, I don't know if he's going to do great. I think there's a possibility that he ends up being decent. But as I mentioned yesterday, I wouldn't. I, at the end of the video yesterday, uh, the wide receiver rankings, I did mention I wouldn't start him over Jameis. I wouldn't start him over Jackson. I wouldn't start him over... Um, Goodness, who are the other names that I mentioned? Mariota, those kind of yeah. I'd rather start those guys. They have better ma- matchups this week. I just I'm not buying in on the idea of them playing the Saints and playing and scoring a lot. Uh, moving on against the Carolina Panthers is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As I just mentioned, their defense is terrible. Therefore, Jameis Winston has to consistently come out and try to score as many points as he can in order to keep this team competitive. They have turned a new leaf. Hopefully, they're not going to be able to, or they're not going to replace. Um, Jameis Winston, but that's totally up to Jameis. Is he going to come out and throw three interceptions? We never know. That's always the risk, but he's looked good in the last two weeks when he's played, and I think this coming week, you'll see it from my rankings, I have a lot of confidence in Jameis this coming week for a guy that if he's still sitting on your waivers and you're struggling at the quarterback position, um, he's not a bad play at all. But then again, he still has that inherent risk, so we have to be careful with that. It's just understanding risk versus reward. I mean, it's the same thing with Lamar Jackson. You know, There's always a risk that he ends up you know, not scoring a touchdown, and they just run the ball down the Atlanta Falcons' throats. That is an absolute possibility, but it's just the upside that is is so juicy and it's so intriguing that you want to play those players. Okay, moving on. The next defense that we want to you know basically match up against Kansas City. Uh, goodness, I'm not starting any Raiders this week, guys. Um, Jared Cook perhaps at the tight end position, but other than that, I'm not touching Derek Carr. We're moving on. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, uh, for sure, you know, I've been mentioning it all week, start all of your Seahawks, um, if you're sitting here thinking, hey, I need a new kicker this week, my kicker's been awful, Sebastian Janikowski, go pick him up right now, put him in your lineup, uh, it would definitely pay dividends this coming week, it is an easy matchup, they're going to be able to kill the 49ers this coming week, and to be honest, I would not mind having the Seahawks kicker in defense, their entire special teams, for the rest of the season, uh, because the Seahawks rest of the season schedule is very um, advantageous in my uh, opinion. They play against the 49ers this week, in which they're going to kill, and Russell Wilson's going to be great against uh, the Minnesota Vikings the following week, in which it's going to be a pretty competitive game. I don't think you know Minnesota is going to be able to run away with it per se. So I think it's going to be competitive, and in the following week they play against the 49ers again, and then they play against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so there, <laughs> there are some good matchups coming up for the. Um, Russell Wilson led offense, so for sure get those uh, get those Seahawks on the roster and get them starting. All right, moving on. Los Angeles can Matthew Stafford take advantage of this? You know, I think he could, but I'm not going to depend on that. This past week, he did not look great. Uh, the offensive line has still been struggling with carry with carry on Johnson out with Marvin Jones out for the rest of the season. There really aren't many weapons. I mean, they're using Bruce Ellington as a <laughs> A mainstay on that offense. It's just they, they were working out uh, CJ Anderson earlier today. I mean, it's just it, it's not looking good. And honestly, I think Matthew Stafford needs to be a drop and uh, potentially sit on your bench for this coming week. Uh, moving on, the Lions. Speaking of Matthew Stafford, their defense is giving up a lot of points to the quarterback position. And, you know, it, it's going to be a pretty clean matchup. My number one running back was Todd Gurley this week, my number one wide receiver was Brandon Cooks. You'll see from my rankings where Jared Goff lies, but uh, it, it's no surprise to many people, I would say. So he's going to have a great game. Uh, moving on, the Patriots give up a bunch of points to the quarterback, which is obvious. Their defense has never been um, stable as of the last couple of years. I think Kirk Cousins will be able to take advantage of that. I think uh, Adam Thielen, <laughs> Stephon Diggs, uh, Dalvin Cook, when he's in a better matchup, which just seems to be the offense will be flowing, and they're going to have to go pick up a uh, pretty – a pretty difficult win going up to Foxborough this week, but I think they're capable of doing so. I think Kirk Cousins is a good play this week. Uh, moving on, the Raiders. We know for a fact Patrick Mahomes is going to tear them apart. Uh, that is nothing to argue against. Uh, the Eagles. Can Colt McCoy? I don't think Colt McCoy is a start this week unless you play in a 2QB league, and even then maybe there's a better option. Um, moving on, the Steelers. Phillip Rivers will be good. Um, I think the absence of Melvin Gordon is going to limit this offense. Now, Austin Eckler is going to just... 
uh, be present on the field majority of the time. Justin Jackson will get some reps here and there. But I think Austin Eckler is primarily going to be used in the passing downs. It's going to open up a little bit more offense. A uh, couple, but I mean, then again, Melvin Gordon is just as good in the passing game. He's just as capable. I just think this hurts them on um, on their first and second downs where they want to run the ball. Um, Austin Eckler is not as good. He's not as capable as Melvin Gordon on a you know on a downly basis. So it's going to hurt them a little bit. That might force uh, Philip Rivers to throw the ball more, and I expect them to do so against the secondary that has been pretty poor um, comparatively to other defenses thus far this season. So uh, they they could give up a a pretty good chunk amount of points to uh, to Keenan Allen and Phillip Rivers combination. All right, moving on to the Redskins. I think Carson Wentz, you know, just watching what they did last week, they are very, very reliant on the running game. Uh, these, these Eagles offense, man, they have not looked great as of late. And I think I'm just I'm a little worried. I really just I'm very hesitant on Carson Wentz. Um, we're not seeing what we saw earlier this season. Once he came back, he was starting to look like you know Carson Wentz from last season, and then it's just it's all gone off off the cliff. And uh, I'm not sure where it lies right now, but this Redskins team, I'm sure they're going to win. The Eagles are going to win this game, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to um, to rely a lot on Carson Wentz and his arm making plays rather than perhaps the run game and Josh Adams dominating. We'll just go ahead and wait and see. Uh, moving on, the Cleveland Browns give a bunch of points. I think Deshaun Watson, uh, man, I, I think I should have ranked Deshaun Watson higher. I honestly believe so. I think he's going to have a fantastic game. If you have him, um, you know, I had him ranked pretty high this past week, and I think I should have had him higher this week, be, even because of that performance and how good this matchup is this week. Um, the Texans are on fire, guys. I mean, eight consecutive wins. Uh, they, they're they looking for, for blood, and I think Pate, I mean, uh, I think... Uh, this uh, Cleveland Browns defense, uh, they're going to be bleeding this weekend. Uh, moving on, the Packers. I don't know if the Cardinals are going to be able to take advantage of them, uh, per se, in the idea that Josh Rosen tears them up. But I think you know the receivers and the running backs of that team should be decent. Um, they'll, they'll have some opportunities to score. The Indianapolis Colts giving up points, but then again, it's Cody Kessler, at quarterback for the Jaguars. The Broncos, um, Jeff Driscoll, rookie quarterback. I'm not sure how much he's going to be able to do. Uh, the Jets, the Miami Dolphins, Jaguars. Anyway, moving on to the more difficult matchups. The Buffalo Bills are giving quarterbacks uh, quite the struggle this year. But then again, they are giving majority of their points to the running back position. Because as soon as teams get down to the goal line, they just they just hand off the ball to the running back. No big deal. And that's where majority of the points come from. So it's a little bit skewed. But then again, the Buffalo Bills defense has been good this year. Uh, I'm not sure if Ryan Daniel, <laughs> you can touch him. The Cardinals giving up uh, also not too many points to the quarterback position. But then again, I mentioned it, guys. Phillip Rivers, he came out, he threw 28 consecutive completed passes last week. I know Aaron Rodgers does not look good this year, but I'm sure him and Devontae Adams, um, you know, that's pretty much it. I was going to say name some other running backs, but him, Devontae Adams, and Aaron Jones, they're, they're, they'll get it done. Don't worry about that. The Chargers are playing tough against the quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger, who has not looked great as of late, um, hasn't been able to find Antonio Brown consistently enough. I think this running game has struggled for them, and I think the Chargers could take advantage of the poor play as of late from Ben Roethlisberger and perhaps hurt him this week. Um so you'll see it from my rankings. The Minnesota Vikings also playing quarterbacks tough. Tom Brady hasn't been um, a fantasy stud as he usually was in seasons past. So um, I could expect him to not have a great week as well. The Chicago play, the yeah Chicago Bears will be um, without Mitchell Trubisky this week. Um, but defensively, the Chicago Bears are playing against um, Eli Manning. That should be an easy, clean sweep. No big deal there. The Baltimore Ravens playing against Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, uh, you know, you'll see it from my rankings, but I'm not sure how much I can trust them this coming week. It's just, it's one of those matchups where I'm a little bit worried uh, to an extent. And I think the Baltimore Ravens, especially once they lock down the run game and force Matt Ryan to consistently have to throw the ball, um, it's, it's going to be tough for them to really do anything offensively. And that's pretty much it, everybody. So do with you must with these stats. Um, check them out, compare your players, uh, see who has the best matchups going into this coming week. Other than that, let's go ahead and move on to my top 18 quarterback rankings for week 13 of the fantasy football season. All righty. So number one. Now, as I mentioned, um, you know, my number one running back is a Ram. My number one wide receiver was a Ram. Um, but I have to give Patrick Holmes the number one wide receiver. I mean, number one quarterback ranking. I just, I have to. I, I honestly believe, yes. 
Uh, Todd Gurley is going to be a stud, and so is Brandon Cooks. It doesn't mean that that's going to translate to um, Jared Goff throwing four-plus touchdowns. So I think three touchdowns is a safe number. I think Jared Goff at number two is clean. But Patrick Mahomes at the number one spot playing against the Raiders defense. They're coming off of a bye week, but prior they came off that tough loss against the Rams in which, you know, they're a little bit heartbroken. And I'm sure Patrick Mahomes had turned over the ball, what, four times? No, yeah, four times that game. I think he threw two picks and fumbled the ball twice. He's going to come off that performance a little bit, a little bit aggravated, a little bit uh, pissed off. He has something to prove, right? And I think he's going to be able to take out his frustration on um, on the Raiders' defense, plain and simple. He's going to number one quarterback. Again, as I mentioned before, the quarterbacks, Dak Prescott and Drew Brees down here, um, I they are currently playing right now. So they aren't on these rankings. I mentioned them yesterday. So, yeah, just, just a fair warning. All right, number two, Jared Goff against the Lions' defense. I think they're going to tear up the Lions. I am honestly fully committed to that idea. And uh, it's a popular opinion. Many of you may be thinking I'm crazy for putting Brandon Cooks at number one, but we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Either way, Jared Goff has so many great weapons around him. This offense is on fire. And I think um, with such an easy matchup against a team that's really struggling because of injuries, uh, they're going to be able to take advantage of it. He's my number two quarterback this coming week. All right, number three, we have Cam Newton. As I mentioned before, you know, his worst performance of the season was week one. Other than that, he has thrown two more, two or more passing touchdowns every single game. Uh, he has been great all season long, continues to be a fantasy stud quarterback on a weekly basis, despite not really having a number one receiver outside of Christian McCaffrey. Um, so, and even with the struggles of, you know, the injuries to Funches and Greg Olson earlier this season, he has been able to maintain a pretty good fantasy baseline. And I think this week into a very advantageous matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense who have been awful this season. I think Cam Newton is a great play. He's my number three this week. All right, number four, we have Andrew Luck playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, um, usually I'd be afraid of this, but to be honest, Andrew Luck's consistency and just being so good on a weekly basis. Again, ladies and gentlemen, he has thrown three or more touchdowns in the last three, six, seven, eight weeks. Eight weeks in a row, he has thrown three or more touchdown passes. I mean, we're, we're seeing something special. And fantasy-wise, you have to start him every week. To be honest, he probably should be my number one quarterback. But uh, I'm pretty sure these other three guys are just as capable of scoring as much as he has. Um, and I think Andrew Luck into this matchup should be good. Uh, he's my number four this week. Number five, we have Russell Wilson playing against the 49ers. Like I mentioned before, I, I think this game is going to uh, rely a lot on the 49ers and how much they can offensively put up. If the 49ers can put up a fight, okay, that is even better for Russell Wilson because there's always a chance that Russell Wilson comes out and they blow out the 49ers and they end up running the ball down their throat in the second half. But then again, there's always a chance that they come out slow, it becomes a competitive game, and then you have Russell Wilson making all the plays, throwing three touchdowns, getting 50 yards rushing, and you're set. And I think there's a possibility of that. And I think even with you know the game getting out of hand, I think Russell Wilson's still coming out to put up 30 points. Plain and simple. They got to send a message here and there. And they got to get ready for the playoffs. Uh, have a good week here. He's my number five quarterback. Number six, Deshaun Watson. Like I mentioned before, I think I may, I should have ranked him higher, but these other quarterbacks are so good. He is a great quarterback. He looked great this past week, finding Demarius Thomas for two receiving touchdowns. This coming week against the Cleveland Browns defense, a defense that has struggled mightily uh, as of the last couple weeks. I think there's a good chance that Deshaun Watson tears apart this defense, uh, you know, puts a, uh, puts a fork in the road for this Cleveland Browns team and makes them decide, you know, are you tough enough to beat a team that has won eight in a row and is probably going to be, uh, you know, a force to be reckoned with in the playoffs? Or are you going to, you know, fold and end up being the Browns? We'll just have to wait and see. But either way, I think Watson tears apart that defense. He has a great week. All right, moving on. Number seven, we have Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings. As I mentioned before, the the defense of the Patriots, they, they haven't been great. You know, they, they haven't been great in a, in a good amount of time. And to be honest, Kirk Cousins will be able to take advantage of that. Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. You can only cover one of them with two guys. If you want to double cover them both, great. They'll end up killing you with Rudolph and Dalvin Cook. I expect Kirk Cousins to have a great week. Uh, he showed up this past week, had a good game against um, the Packers defense, which, you know, the Packers defense isn't great. You know, we know that for a fact. But as of late, uh, Kirk Cousins has been pretty good. The only times he struggled is when 
the games are just pretty much out of control and they're blowing out teams. I don't think that's going to take place in which they're blowing out the Patriots. I think this will be competitive and in that uh, mindset, I think he'll have a very good week. It's going to be competitive. He's going to have to go back and forth scoring and competing. Uh, He'll have a good fantasy week. He's my number seven. Number eight, we have Aaron Rodgers. Speaking of the Packers, uh, they play against the Cardinals this week. And (laughs) I saw this thing on Twitter uh, in which it said, if... Like, there was basically a breakdown of how many teams had to lose how many games. And um, if the Packers won out, they had like a 10% chance or even less than 10% chance of making the playoffs, right? It required the Eagles to lose one game, the Vikings to lose three games, um, the Seahawks to lose two games, like something like that, in which they win out somehow miraculously. They can make wild card play. But... I guess you can say at least they have a chance. And they're going to have a fighting chance this week. They're going to score fantasy points. Aaron Rodgers is going to be fine. Uh, he's my number eight this week. Number nine, Phillip Rivers playing against the Steelers defense. It's going to be a competitive game. Another AFC matchup. Potentially a playoff matchup uh, that we could see later on this season. So uh, a lot is on the line. Potentially. I think um, Phillip Rivers is going to come to play. He looked great this past week. And uh, with Melvin Gordon now, I think they're going to have to be forced to pass the ball more. This may hurt him. He may turn over the ball um, once or twice this coming game. But I think he's going to consistently be throwing the ball in order to help his team win this week. Uh, He's my number nine. Number 10, we have Jameis Winston. I'm telling you, for as bad as the the Tampa Bay defense is, the Carolina Panthers are not too far behind. Carolina Panthers have given up a lot of points as of late. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, they've they've really been struggling defensively. Um, I mean, in this three-game skid, uh, you know, the Seahawks put up 30 this past week. Uh, the week before that, it was only 20 from the uh, Lions. But then again, the Lions are beat up. And then they, they got the 50 bomb dropped on them by the Steelers the week prior. So I think there is a potential that Jameis Winston can come out. He could look good, pick up, you know, some pretty good yards, some fantasy points here and there. They've got a talented offense. So Jameis Winston, you're my number 10. Uh, number 11, we have Ben Roethlisberger. Now, Here's the thing about Ben. I honestly believe, okay, if Ben Roethlisberger is to be successful, he's got a number one, stop complaining about the wide receivers playing. You know, I, I saw this thing on uh, ESPN this morning before I went to work and was like, uh, Ben Roethlisberger calls out his wide receivers for poor play, blah, blah. Okay, great. You called out your wide receivers. What is that going to do? How about you go ahead, you say, hey, let's run the ball more. Let's give James Conner the ball. Because he's only getting the ball 13, 9 times, you know, like 10 times a game. What the heck is that about? Run the ball and you will win games. You won't have to complain about wide receivers if you run the ball consistently. You have the defenses stacking the box and it'll open up Juju Smith, Antonio Brown, James Washington, Jesse James, Vance McDonald to get open. Ryan Switzer. Goodness, you have so many weapons. Why are you complaining? Just find somebody to rock and first of all, establish a running game. Here's the thing. I mean, this this team, uh, they've they've had some struggles in the last couple weeks. Uh, they they barely beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, who looked like dog crap last week. And uh, this past week, they straight out flat lost to the Denver Broncos team, uh, playing up in the Mile High City. It's tough, but then again, they they lost pretty pretty handily there. Uh, ben Roethlisberger this week. Hopefully they establish a run game. That's what I expect them to do against the Chargers. Chargers secondary is nothing to mess around with, so I expect them to run the ball more. It may affect his yardage. He's still a good quarterback. He's still in my top 12. He's still a QB1. Uh, should still be good, but then again, I, I expect them to run the ball more. All right, moving on to number 12, we have Marcus Mariota. Now, it's just it's too good of a matchup. You're playing against the Jets defense, and the Jets are just they are not a great team. Thus far this season, uh, defensively have them look good, and they give up a bunch of points to the wide receiver position, the quarterback position, and in the running game. I expect Marcus Mariota to take advantage of that. As of late, they have looked better as a team. They did struggle this past Monday night against the Texans, but that is, you know, that, that happens. You know, the Texans are a great team right now. Marcus Mariota and the Titans, they're a good team. They're not great as of right now, and I think a good team is all you need to be to put up some fantasy points against those Jets. He's my number 12. Number 13, Lamar Jackson. Again, as I mentioned, this is a good matchup, but there is always a possibility that they run the ball with Gus Edwards, Alex Collins, uh, Ty Montgomery, and they kill this clock, and they just completely take the air out of the football. And Lamar Jackson, yes, he'll get some plays here and there where he'll run the ball, he'll pass the ball, but there's always a chance he comes out with no touchdowns. That's why I'm a little bit... um, skeptical of playing him but I expect him to have a decent week he's still a good streaming quarterback or a guy that um, 
if you just if you play in a four point per passing touchdown league, he's probably a better play. Um, moving on, number fourteen, Tom Brady. Okay, so here's the thing: um, if Xavier Rhodes does not play this week, I think Tom Brady is a better play than fourteen. But if he is active and ready to go, I think they're going to rely a lot upon the short passing um, game with Julian Edelman, uh, James White. And they're going to have to be forced to methodically move the ball downfield uh, piece by piece. And eventually when it's going to happen, they're going to get down to the red zone. They're going to run the ball. And that's where the points are going to you know, slip away from Tom Brady. And uh, yeah, I just I can't trust them right now. Uh, not comparatively to these other quarterbacks. These other quarterbacks have better matchups, and they have been scoring more consistently on a weekly basis. So I trust them more, uh, more than Tom Brady. Yes, he has the name, he has the uh, accolades and the the legacy. But as of right now in fantasy, I just I'm not reeling the roll with it. All right, moving on. Number 15, Carson Wentz just hasn't looked great as of late. And to be honest, it's it's tough for me to say that Carson Wentz has just been terrible as of late. But to be honest, it's just been that offense. They've They've staggered a little bit since, I mean, they had that terrible week against the Saints where he had literally less than one fantasy point. Uh, in some leagues, he must have had negative fantasy points, to be honest. This past week, only had 15 fantasy points, only had one passing touchdown um, on 20 completions. Just didn't, just didn't look good. And I think um, they're going to continue to key in on running the ball. I think Carson Wentz, um, he'll be decent, but he's just not going to be fantastic. I'm just a little worried for him. Moving on, number 16, Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan, um, he always has the possibility of breaking out and having a good game. Um, the thing is, they play against a very tough defense. And in fact, you know, Julio Jones is going to get his. But Tevin Coleman, he's going to struggle. I know Calvin Ridley is going to struggle. Muhammad Sunu is going to struggle. And in turn, uh, this offensive line, this offense, that defense, if the, if uh, Lamar Jackson and that offense come out and they run the ball a lot and they they dominate the time of possession, it's going to be tough for Matt Ryan to get anything done, especially if he has to come out and force balls down the field. It's going to be tough for him. He's my number 16. Number 17, Baker Mayfield. Coming off of being the number one quarterback in uh, fantasy last week, I just I am scared of that Texans defense. In all honesty, that Texans defense is nothing to mess around with. Uh, they looked fantastic this past week. And I think as of the last couple weeks, uh, specifically the last eight weeks, they have looked really good. Um, they've looked like a complete team. And I think they're going to give Baker a little bit of tr- uh, struggle. You know, Baker Mayfield, right? Let's see really quickly. All right. As of the last couple weeks, who has Baker played against? He played against Atlanta and Cincinnati and Kansas City. I mean, those are free matchups. Cincinnati last week. They put up majority of their points in the first round. No surprise, Cincinnati's giving up the most points to the quarterback position. The week prior, they played against Atlanta, in which he had three touchdown passes. Guess what? They give up the second most points to the quarterback position. And then they played against Kansas City. And you know what Kansas City, you know how many points they give up to the quarterback position? Let's see. They are ranked, they're giving up the sixth most points to the quarterback position. I just think Baker Mayfield, yes, the hype is getting there. Um, We've heard his name go around in the news for talking crap, but it doesn't matter. I think this week in fantasy, uh, it's a risky play. And I'm just, I'm a little afraid of it. He's my number 17. All right, number 18, Case Keenum. All right, here we go, Case Keenum. I think it's maybe the first time you've ever been ranked, but congratulations, you're here. Do not let us down. I think you can have a great week against Cincinnati Bengals defense. Just got to find Emmanuel Sanders for 14 targets. Um, You know, 90 receiving yards, six receptions, and a touchdown. That's all we want. That's all we want. Get two passing touchdowns. Throw one to that, that younger tight end, uh, Lacoste. Boom. Two touchdowns. That's all we need. All right. That's pretty much it, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, go hit me down below. I will try to get to your questions by Saturday. It's usually the benchmark in which I try to get collect all my information on the week, whether it's injuries, um, specific, um, I don't know, players getting signed, sent the IR, um, information coming out here and there on snap counts. Stuff like that. I try to answer it by Saturday so that it's the most updated. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching. If you haven't already, go down, click that subscribe button for more content and or click that like button if you haven't. All right, thank you guys and I'll see you guys. Go Cowboys, go Rams. If the Saints lose, the Rams, they're looking better. All right, see you guys.